So in this lesson, we'll share a little bit more research on this issue, this idea that different social classes have different worldviews. We've already seen the research on choice, those experiments where you give a certain choice to people from working class or middle class, and they, they seem to be choosing in different ways, and that may be reflecting some of their, their attitudes and their values and worldview. Um, the concept that we'll look at here is what psychologists call hard individualism versus soft individualism. And these two ideas are associated with different segments of the socioeconomic ladder. Um, individualism, uh, right, is this value that is pretty widespread in American society. But that notion of individualism appears to have different sort of meanings for different groups in society. And so there are uh, subtle differences in the way middle and upper class individuals understand individualism versus working class. So um, here we have independence and high SES, so that would be socioeconomic uh, status individuals. Both high and low SES parents are concerned about raising children to be individualistic, right? It is a, it's a kind of a national sort of uh, value or uh, a norm. But the meaning differs. In the high SES groups, what we're going to call soft individualism, here's the idea, that the parents kind of see their children as flowers that need to discover and develop their own unique qualities in order to blossom out into a welcoming world, right? So that quote there kind of captures this, this uh, worldview that it, 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 the, that parents really sort of their job is to, is to help their children really thrive, right? So they're going to be investing just like you would a plant. You invest in the plant's health and so on. And the w it's a welcoming world, right? And so what, what the parents want to do is just equip their kids with the skills and, and social skills and the academic skills so that they can be unique and follow their passions and do whatever it is that they want to do in the world and be successful in all that. And this is notably different from what psychologists find in the lower SES families, right? We'll call that hard individualism. Here, the view is that children need to be toughened up, right, so that they'll be able to, to keep themselves and their values intact in an uncertain world. So here, the, the view is that the world is a tough place to live in, right? I mean, you might not have a lot of money or resources, uh, You've got other kinds of obstacles or constraints. Maybe you're living in a bad neighborhood and you've got people challenging you or something. You know, life is tough, right? It's not a welcoming world. It's an uncertain world. You know, you're living paycheck to paycheck. You might be losing the job, uh, all kinds of things. There might be crime in the neighborhood. You could be an unfortunate victim of that. And you need to be hardened up, toughened up to these tough realities of life down there in the lower uh, rungs of the socioeconomic ladder. Um, but of course, both we can think of as individualism because the parents are seeing their children as, as requiring some kind of guidance in order so that they can get along by themselves in the world. It's just what's the focus on. In the high SES families, the focus is on sort of uh, uh, developing skills and talents and, and encouraging individuals to pursue their passions and their interests and be, be unique in the world, whereas in the low SCS families, it's you got to be toughened up so that you can, you can make your way in a tough world, right? Now, some researchers have looked at how different types of music, different genres of music may capture some of these ideas, some of these differences in uh, individualism, soft versus hard. Um, just to take a look at how rock music and country music are embraced by different educational groups. High school here, or less than high school, high school, associate's degree, BA, uh, greater than a master's. For rock, as educational attainment goes up, you see greater, greater uh, percentage of people who like that genre. Right, so the well-educated, higher percentage of well-educated people like rock than less well-educated people. For country, the trend, trend is the opposite direction. It's the, the lower educated groups in society who are showing the greatest percentage of liking for country. And the more education you get, a 
that's correlated with less liking for country music. And some researchers went ahead and started to analyze the lyrics of rock music and country music. They wanted to see whether they could detect any differences in worldview. You know, what are these songs about? And does that sort of track, does it correlate with these, the, these ideas of soft individual versus uh, individualism versus hard individualism? And here are some of the results. Uh, they looked at various dimensions, uh, integrity, uniqueness, self-management, self-expansion, resisting, exerting, right? So for integrity, is the song talking about being honest and reliable, being loyal, faithful, for uniqueness, being unique, talented, being ideal, superlative, self-management, adjustment, adjusting goals, compromising, self-expansion, you know, pursuing goals, their dreams, your ideals, creating artistic expression, et cetera, resisting, rebelling against authority, being wild, natural, free, exerting, commanding, requesting, persuading. And then these were particular lyrics from different types of songs. So they were looking for lyrics that fit into these categories, and these categories they were are going to associate with hard individualism or soft individualism. Here's what they found. For the uh, country, so percent here f uh, in the genre of country, for the integrity and uniqueness, country higher in integrity than the rock, and for uniqueness, the rock, a uh, higher percentage of uh, lyrics uh, in the rock were expressing uniqueness concepts or statements uh, compared to the country. Um, Self-management, country higher than the rock. Self-expansion, rock higher than the country. Resisting, country higher than the rock. Exerting, rock higher than the country. And so for each uh, of these pairings here, one of them is more associated with the sort of uh, soft individualism, the more middle class worldview, and one is associated with the harder individualism. Um, integrity is a value uh, related to the hard individualism, and the country has more of that value expressed in the lyrics than the rock. Uniqueness more associated with the middle class worldview, and here we have rock uh, expressing more of that value. Self-management, right? Tough world, gotta, gotta keep yourself in check or else trouble comes your way. Uh, country showing that more than the rock. Self-expansion, you know, uh, be different and uh, expand yourself. Open, open up your eyes, open up your experiences, do new things. Rock uh, showing uh, more of that than country. Resisting, you know, resisting your impulses or, or some some temptations or something more of that in country than in rock. Exerting, right? Um, exerting your power uh, and being autonomous, right? Uh, more of that, striving for thing, more of that in the rock than the country. So for these researchers, they find evidence of these different worldviews in the music that uh, uh, these two genres of music. Middle class tend to listen more to the rock because higher edu high more highly educated people more likely to be listening to rock. Less educated people uh, more likely to be listening to country uh, than rock. And they're finding these uh, different uh, uh, values expressed in the lyrics. So to wrap up some of these uh, studies, um, for the working class, right, choice is signaling connection to others. They're being socialized to hard individualism. It's going to be a tough world out there, and you've got to keep your values intact, keep your integrity. You've got to resist some of the tough stuff coming at you. And country music, that's what it's about, coping, adjusting, integrity, and so on. Right? For the middle class, the idea here is that their choice uh, is signaling independence from others. And they're socialized to soft individualism, right, that... Uh, that th there's a there's a world out there waiting to be conquered, you know, and you can pursue whatever whatever your passion right dictates, and you'll be equipped to to meet a world and thrive in it, right? The soft individualism and what's rock music about, right? Expression, expansion, uniqueness, right? And so, again, the music, the genre, the lyrics in that music fit with this sort of uh, socializing difference um, and with this worldview difference. 
course, what's sort of causing these difference? Under what's the underlying some of the underlying factors that might be related to why these different segments of society are embracing these different socialization practices and and different worldviews and are enjoying different types of music. And and so here we can we can think about some of the um, economic factors at play. You know, in the working class, if there's less money, less education, this is going to be influencing your ability to make choices that um, would be different, right? If you don't have the resources and nobody else does in your neighborhood, you're probably all going to be kind of doing and buying the same type of stuff, you know, economical stuff, cheap stuff to get along. You're not going to be carving out your own self-identity uh, by, you know, buying some expensive new thing that only you have and nobody else has because you might not have the resources to do that. Um, and, of course, with, with, with less education, you know, your options are just limited in the working class context. And so, uh, you know, uh, the life is going to be a little bit harder when your options are, are limited in, in this way. Um, uh, and the music then is sort of uh, talking about life in this working class context. For the middle class, with more money available, more resources, uh, uh, parents are able to invest in their children and, uh, and they're encouraging their children to, uh, to be different, right? And that, that can take uh, resources, right? And of course, the education is going to equip their children to pursue their passions, right? And so the children are going to learn to see the world as, as inviting, welcoming. They can, they can conquer the world, right? With, with, with their talents and their education, the world is, uh, is their oyster, so to speak. And then the rock music is sort of uh, reflecting some of these values um, of self-expression and uniqueness and self-identity.